Hello everybody and welcome into the first edition of Adventures with Mr. Ambrose. As you can see, you're not just adventuring with me today. We've got a whole family affair here today. I'm here with my niece, Ava. My mom is sitting behind the camera and my wife is running the camera. So they get to adventure with me every day as well, just like you guys do at home. So on today's adventure, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning a lot about beavers and how they act and what their natural habitat is like. And we're going to be taking trips around the lake on the boat. We're going to be walking around on land. We're going to be talking about beaver adaptations. You're going to get to learn a lot about the animal that we call the beaver. And Ava, do you know where we're sitting right now? On the beaver's lawn. That's right. We are sitting on top of the beaver's home right now. And that's where we're going to start this adventure today. So where I'm standing right now is I'm actually standing right on top of a beaver's lodge. And the interesting thing about these lodges is you might just think that they are a bunch of sticks and debris and mud and wood all gathered up in the water. But for the beavers, this is their home. And what they do is they build these lodges. Three fourths of the lodge is built above ground or above the water level. And one fourth is built beneath the water level so they have a safe entrance into the lodge. So behind me, where I'm standing, is I've got this hillside at the edge of the lake right next to me, and then a pile of mud and sticks beneath me. That's the underground entrance to their lodge, and their lodge actually goes back into this hillside a little bit. The interesting thing about their lodge is it comes in two parts. They've got that safe underground or underwater entrance, which keeps them away from predators on land, like wolves or coyotes or bears or things like that. But then once they come up from underneath the water and into their lodge, it's an open air lodge because they are semi-aquatic animals. They've got two parts to their lodge. It's a big domed area, about four meters high, three to four meters high. And one part is a much smaller part where the entrance actually comes into. It's like a mudroom in your house or a little area where you can take your shoes off and get clean before you go running through mom's house. That's where they dry out because they have really thick waterproof fur that keeps them warm during the winter when the water's colder because they don't hibernate. And number two, it also gives them a chance to dry off right there above the water before they go into the rest of the house, which is a much bigger dome. And that's where they actually live. And anywhere from four adults to four to eight kits or kids can live in that lodge at one time. Now, what beavers do is they gather wood from all around. They cut down trees, they trim off limbs, and they use that and mud to build a waterproof and sealed up lodge. And like I said before, they have that waterproof fur, but they also have many other adaptations that allow these animals to be semi-aquatic animals, meaning they live part of their time on land, they do a lot of their work on land, they eat on land, and when they're in their lodge, they're living in an open air environment, but they spend a lot of time in the water. They've got certain adaptations that allow them to do that. Number one is the fur. They've got waterproof thick fur that keeps them warm. Number two, they have webbed feet, which act like really good swimmers. It helps them swim through the water quicker. Number three, they can stay underwater and hold their breath for up to 15 minutes. So if they feel threatened, which they have by me coming out here and fishing sometimes, what they do is they slap their big tail. They let me know that they see me. They're warning me off and then they stay underwater for a really long time until I go away. They do that for any predators or any time they feel threatened. Another adaptation that they have is that long paddle-like tail, which is another thing that really helps them swim in the water. And those tails also allow them to store fat that they get from their diet. They can store fat in those tails, which keep them fed during the winter. They burn that fat during the winter and it's just a good spot to store it keeps them warm. It allows them to thermoregulate, which means it can keep their body warm and it regulates their temperature, much like sweat does for humans. Another few adaptations that they have that allows them to be semi-aquatic animals, meaning they can live in the water or on land, is they are able to close their ears and their nose when they swim. So they don't have to do this when they want to jump in the water. They just have to get in the water and they can shut those off so they don't get any water in their ears or nose. Another thing that they can do that helps them swim underwater is they have transparent eyelids. When we close our eyes, everything goes black. But when they close their eyes, they can see straight through it. So when they're swimming underwater, 
they don't have to hurt their eyesight while they're swimming underwater. They can just keep those eyelids closed and they can still see through them. So when beavers give birth, they can give birth to anywhere from two to four kits at one time. And all those kits are going to live in that lodge with them for two years. That means when kits are two years old, they get kicked out of the lodge and they have to go build their own lodge for them and their family. Now, I know you're thinking that seems early, but you should just be thankful that you don't get kicked out of your house until you're 18. They only get two years to learn, learn the ropes and then they gotta go live on their own. So one of the special things about beavers is that they have these two really large front teeth, like buck teeth, that grandma always talks about, that can grow up to 20 to 25 millimeters in size. Now those teeth continuously grow and if they got too big, they would start to hurt the beaver. So they have to do something to keep those teeth from getting too big. And one of the things they do is they chew on wood. And so in order to make their dams and their lodges, they need a lot of trees and sticks. So one of the things that they do is they are able to fall trees of this size and bigger as we're gonna see using those two front teeth and chopping away at all the different sides of the trunk of that tree. Now, another reason why we've chosen this tree to talk about is because a beaver's diet also includes sticks, leaves, twigs, bark, and other aquatic plants. More specifically, beavers are able to digest what is called cellulose, which helps them store fat. And that's the reason that they're able to actually eat the bark of specific trees. Those would be aspens, willows, maples, and poplar trees. What we have here, I believe, is a poplar tree because as you can see, as we go further down this tree, there are marks where the beavers are actually chewing the bark off that tree and eating it to store fat. There's even more down here. That's a large part of their diet. They're able to eat the bark off those trees, the leaves, the twigs, the roots, and then like I said earlier, they also eat aquatic plants. Hey guys, so we're back here now. We're back um, tucked away in the cattails a little bit, uh, bringing you to the beaver's favorite spot. And I say it's their favorite spot because they created it. So 10 years ago, um, all of these cattails that you see around us, these things right here, um, they all used to be, this used to be a whole field of cattails. Now, as you can see behind me, there's a bunch of ponds and beaver dams sitting back behind me. So what this is, is the beavers have dammed up a river um, over here to our right. And they dam it up because these ponds are the safest place for them to live. They can have three to four families back here in these ponds. They build these big ponds like the ones you see behind me. And they put their lodges right in the middle because that's the safest place. What they need is a pond about three to four feet deep. Any deeper is okay, but they want an underwater entrance to that lodge and they build it right in the middle of the ponds so that no landbound predators like coyotes, bears, wolves, anything like that can get to them when they're in the safety of these ponds. Um, they can live or they can spend up to 15 minutes underwater without coming up for air. That's kind of what, like what we talked about earlier in this video. So what they do is they dam up the river and they create a big pond. And then where that pond flows out, they'll dam up the next little bit of river and create another pond and another pond and another pond and it allows them to stay safe and it allows them to stay far away from predators which is definitely their preference because they don't have that many um, that many ways to fight back against predators they're not well adapted to fight back against predators so they do their best to live in the safest place now one of the things that they have is a scent gland on their tails that they use to mark their territory and as we're sitting back here you can kind of smell it's not the greatest smell, it's a little musty, so we know we're in the right spot because of the dams and because of that musty smell that we're smelling.
Yeah. Hey guys, so here we are looking at the Five Star Beaver Resort from kind of on the hill up above it. And what we're looking at down here is where the river runs in and where they've set up a series of dams to push that water into their ponds because that's the safest place for them to live. Now we were down on the boat earlier right back in the middle of this. But now you're going to get a chance to see everything laid out from a bird's eye view. And boy is it awesome.